Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I wanna have a look at the whole crypto space in general. And the way that we're going to do that is by looking at two key charts, total and total three. Now total, if you're not sure, basically represents the whole crypto space, all value in the crypto space. So for example, if I wanted to buy every Bitcoin, all of Ethereum, every other altcoin out there, it would cost me X amount depending on uh, when I wanted to buy. Uh, so it's very useful to see sort of, it's the market cap of all of crypto. It's very useful and sort of shows us the general health of the crypto space. Total 2 is the exact same, but with the important difference of not including Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it's basically the whole altcoin market. And it's really cool to sort of compare these two and see where altcoins would be if Bitcoin, you know, was taken out of the equation. How well they're performing independent of Bitcoin and Ethereum. We'll also have another quick look at another chart, which is the Bitcoin dominance, which I think is such an important chart to have a look at. I also made a video not too long ago on the Bitcoin dominance. So if that's something you're interested in, go check that out after this video. I also want to precursor this video quickly by saying if you rely on others to sort of present information to you, I think that's fine. That's okay. I'd much rather you get this information from somewhere, but most likely, especially if you're new to the space, You've probably only been sort of uh, pushed a small sample size of altcoins and you've sort of maybe chosen your favorite and you know that's what you've kind of stuck with and maybe you've gone into a bit of research and detail about that altcoin and you're happy with it but you haven't really been given a broad um, understanding of what cryptocurrencies are what they really do or how they've performed another problem with just you know analyzing an altcoin or two is that they probably don't have much price history and if we look at total, excuse me, if we look at the total chart, we can see we have up to March of 2014, which is probably a lot longer than your altcoin. It also gives you a general understanding of what happens just in the altcoin space in general. A lot of altcoins will perform the same. They'll all move up at a similar rate at a similar time. And with this chart, we can make accurate predictions on when maybe these things will come to fruition, you know? Um, so just something to be aware of. I think it's good that you're taking the time to uh, teach yourselves these things. I want to also structure this video in a way where I want to compare the previous cycles, compare the similarities and find an average, and then compare that average to what we're currently experiencing. These also lines what you're looking at. This green, well, I'll start off with the white here. This white represents the pre-halving year and then the halving year. And this green line represents where we move from the pre-halving to the halving year. This orange line represents where the halving takes place. This is obviously not set in stone yet. This could fluctuate probably a couple of days, but it will be mostly accurate. But of course, for previous data, we have the exact day. And uh, this is where these lines are placed. Um, so getting straight into it, we'll have a look at total. This is all of the market cap value. We can see back in 2015, the first pre-halving year that we have on this chart, we can see that getting super basic with it. We start at the bottom. This is where this white range is drawn from. It's from the bottom to the top. We can see we start low enough, and by the end of the pre-halving year, we've moved up roughly about halfway, roughly about halfway. Um, if we have a look at our next one, we do the same. We start at the bottom, we move up and finish the year roughly halfway. Even though we do go up higher during the year, we spend half of it going up, half of it going down, we finish the year roughly halfway. We then have a look at the time, the interim between the new year, the halving year, and the halving. And we see different things play out here. In 2016, we see um, Bitcoin kind of, sorry, the market doesn't really do much. And then as the halving draws near, we'll zoom in. As the halving draws near, we start rallying up. And then we have a big sell-off a week or two before. And then we have another big sell-off sort of a week or two afterwards. If we then go have a look at what happened the last cycle, we had a rally into the new year, and then we had a major sell-off, and then we had a rally again. I know you're thinking that these two look very different in terms of what happened, but I'd actually like to sort of um, throw a bit of a spanner in the works, maybe give a bit of a controversial opinion, depending on who you ask, but we ultimately did the same thing. If you measure this blue line here, we sort of just steadily went up over the year. 
even if we only went up suddenly towards the end, towards the halving, sorry, not the whole year, we still went up. And we can see that this basically happens um, in 2020 as well. We just steadily went up, even though we went up, down, and then up. The end result was that we went up, not by much, but just steadily went up over those sort of four or five months. I would also like to show you something interesting as well. If we take how far we dropped here, it was a 64% move, which is a big, big sell off, big sell off. And part of that was due to COVID. But again, I would like to show you something interesting. If we take the total market again, and we measure these two sell offs here, these big sell offs, we go down 30% just before the halving. And then just after the halving, we have another sell off of about another 30%. Now, that would roughly be a 60-ish percent sell-off that we experienced during the halving. I want to say during the halving, which is very, very similar to what we experienced here, a 65% off percent drop during the halving, but ultimately ending up higher than where we were. So one key takeaway here is that the general crypto space is rising and it its lowest point is usually at the start of the halving year, back in January. If we go to currently our halving year, we can see that this white box is much smaller because you know we haven't sort of gotten to this point yet where we usually put in our highs. Our white box is much smaller, but everything else seems to have played out the same. We seem to have gone up. Our lowest point was at the start of the year, and then we've, we've gone up. But instead of having a, a pullback, like we often do at some point here, like we spent a lot of this part much lower and then we rallied had a pullback and rallied finished halfway up you know we rallied had a pullback finished halfway up here we've just sort of rallied and we've had a couple of pullbacks but we've kept rallying and we're actually pushing we're currently at the highest we've been this cycle or sorry this year um market cap wise total market cap wise and what this actually reminds me of really is this part of the chart this year this 2015 year but inverted so what happens once we launch? So we start at the bottom, but here we go straight up to the top. As whereas here we just stay at the bottom. And then at the very end, literally in November sort of time, late October, November, we have a big price change, big price change when we move all the way up to the middle, we have a bit of a pullback and then we rally back up. I could see something like the opposite happening where maybe we have a big pullback instead. Now I know we've had a big rally here, like we have done um, back here, but maybe, you know, it could have a pullback. I do think we will probably go lower. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Maybe we will just go sideways. I think BTC will retain a lot of its value, but, um, that's neither here nor there. That's kind of for you to decide. I'm just sort of putting ideas out there and you can choose to accept them or ignore them based on what you think will happen again. Um, coming back to sort of the interim between the new year and the halving, we generally go up. So whichever way that happens, we generally go up. I think we will see market cap go down a bit. So I think we could see something like this play out where we enter it at a lower stage and then climb back up into the halving and then have a big sell off again after the halving. But honestly, at this point, it's impossible to sell. And to be honest, I don't think it's too important really. Like, you know, these sort of values, like if you want to look, if you want to take it as whatever the price is starting the new year next year, and measure it from how much it increased. We went up 1500% last cycle. Now that doesn't mean we'll go up 1500% from where we enter the new year of 2024. You know, there's no way of saying that for sure. Um, but it is most likely that if you're buying around this time, you'll probably do well. If we have a look back here again, if you're buying around this time, yeah, it had a short term dip for a few months, but ultimately after that, it didn't go below it and it's never been below there either. So ultimately, key takeaway from total um, chart that I want to sort of show to you is that the pre-halving year, we ultimately spend, oh, sorry, we not ultimately spend, we ultimately finish higher than where we started, ultimately. In the interim, we do again ultimately finish higher than where we started, where we entered, whether we go up and down and up, or whether we just sort of slowly go up, uh, we do usually finish higher. And then finally, after the halving, we tend to continue going upwards. So, so far this has sort of played out how it usually has. 
we started low and we'll probably finish higher. I mean, I can't imagine we drop down to here again in the space of a two month, but you know, nothing's impossible. During this interim, I expect we will tend higher, whatever way it happens. And then naturally by that point, we'll be mid 2024, sort of preparing for our bull run and slowly market cap will continue to rise. If we take a look at the total two chart, again, it paints a similar picture. This is without Bitcoin and Ethereum, however, and we can see that previously, total topped out at three trillion, okay? We can see the altcoin space topped out at 1.13 trillion. So basically a third of what Bitcoin and Ethereum did. And a lot of that is also coming from Bitcoin, I'll remind you, like a lot of that is Bitcoin. Like the flipping has not happened. So Bitcoin has always held more value than Ethereum. Now, maybe that happens this cycle, I don't know. To be honest with you, I don't think it's that important. Um, but yeah, we have a bit less data on this one as well, just because a lot of the altcoins that have, you know, kind of existed in the top 250 aren't very old, but it, it, it plays out the same. Like realistically, this measures the top 250 altcoins. So a lot of these altcoins are changing. Like, you know, maybe altcoins that were here aren't the same altcoins that are measured here, but the, the market still plays out the same because it still follows the same trends. And we can see like, uh, if we go back to the 2020 total one, we see a very similar move here, but we generally just follow this trend up and the same rules apply. We um, start the year at a low in 2020, 2019, anyway, we started at a low, we went up to a high, we rallied for the first half of the year and then bled for the, the second half. We'll see that we came back to basically where we were on the altcoin market, whereas in total one, we were like much, we were higher above where we were, where we started. But here we come back again in the interim between the new year and the halving. We have a rally like we did on total one, but we actually come down lower than where we started. We put in a new low basically from this 2019 period to 2021 period. And then after that we do rally, but we see that total up until basically the halving point holds up much better than the altcoin space. And this is basically because of Bitcoin, basically. So Bitcoin here performs much better during these periods than the altcoin space does. Um, if we have a look at what we're currently going through, we can see a sort of similar picture, but also no, different from total one, sorry, total, because we see we start low. Yeah, sure. We have our rally, but unlike total, total two has dropped and it comes back down to its yearly open here. It finds support, bounces off, comes back up a bit, comes back down again. And then only recently it's sort of had another rally. So this rally does show that to be fair to the altcoin space, a lot of this rally has come from altcoins, but it has also come from Bitcoin. Like a lot of it has come from Bitcoin. We've rallied higher with total one included. And with total one, we're currently at our highest points during the year, at the year. However, with total two, we're still not at our heights. And we've come down to our lows, whereas total one, we didn't come down to our lows, we stayed relatively high, and now we've put in a new high. So again, it shows that Bitcoin mainly, it was the reason, the reason that total is higher is because of Bitcoin. It shows that Bitcoin has performed much better than the altcoin space and has actually kept it up much higher than it would be without Bitcoin. And again, sort of looking into where we're sort of headed, we could very well, if we see poor price action in the next few months, we could very well end up close to where we started the year. Maybe a little bit above, like here, we're probably a little bit above, like, you know, it's so narrow there, it's hard to tell. We could end up a little bit above, maybe we're sort of around this 320 billion mark, and then maybe whatever happens here, we do slowly climb up, like we see here, but maybe we even put in a lower low. Who knows? There's a lot of ifs in sort of the air, but what I do know is that we will again ultimately trend higher during this time like it has shown or well it has shown that we will ultimately trend higher so i believe we will ultimately trend higher but you know with bitcoin it's performed much better so it kind of shows that bitcoin is really important to hold during this time if it, majority of it anyway if, if at all any altcoins like bitcoin has outperformed and continues to outperform the altcoin space so why would you hold altcoins at this given moment I'm not saying never buy altcoins. I think, to be honest, if you want to make the most money in crypto, you have to buy altcoins. 
but it's just about timing. And this is something that these other influencers won't tell you. They'll go say, buy this altcoin now, it's really cheap. That may be true, but if you buy Bitcoin, it will perform much better. So uh, currently from historical data, and then you can move that Bitcoin into your altcoin and buy more of your altcoin with the same amount of money spent, if you get me. So that's just something I wanted to uh, point out and provide you with. But yeah, ultimately, key takeaway, altcoin market without Bitcoin and Ethereum has performed much worse, but still performs very well. And during after the halving, the altcoin market does very well. Like we see a big move here, like a 1600% move, very similar to total, but um, a lot again, that value that, that explodes here in total is from the altcoin market. Not much of it is from Bitcoin. And if we take a look at the Bitcoin dominance now, which will switch to a very different chart uh, that I'll just stay on, make a point on very quickly, we can see that um, during the bull run, Bitcoin dominance collapses and then leading up to the halving, Bitcoin dominance really rallies. These white lines here show where the halvings have taken place. Halving here, halving here, projected halving here. Um, we can see that, you know, once the halving happens, Bitcoin often experiences a big sell-off because that's when our bull run takes place. You know, the year after the halving. Post-halving year is when we have our bull run. We then usually drop down to a sort, a sort of below 50% range, and we usually get rejected off this a few times. We've had a very long bear run, this cycle. So we've had multiple rejections. We spent an, o over a year, basically, a year and a half below this this sort of line. Now our bear run started in 2020, and we broke above it in June of 2023. So a year and a half in this sort of bear run. And now we're starting to climb, which represents that the market is becoming healthier. But a lot of the market is is relying on Bitcoin to make it healthier. So a lot of value goes to Bitcoin. We see this here. We have Bitcoin leads the way, prepares everyone for the bull run. A bit before the halving, dominance usually tops out. And then altcoins start to take their value back from Bitcoin. Another key thing to take into mind here is that the dominance topped out at this Fibonacci retracement level of 0 0.618. If we draw a Fibonacci retracement level from the start of the year, and we bring it to its lows, or sorry, the highest point of the year, um, and then bring it to its lows, we see this 0 0.618 level tops out again at roughly 60%. I think this sort of ties into a sort of diminishing returns um, that we see as asset classes grow. And I think that ultimately the, the altcoin asset class is growing as well as Bitcoins. But Bitcoin can't continue to take as much dominance away from these altcoins because there's just so many of them now. And surely by number alone, you know, it, it can't. And, and Ethereum is a big deal for this as well. Ethereum is what's taking away a lot of value from the Bitcoin dominance, preventing the dominance from going much higher. I think the dominance will go higher. Like we saw with this line here, once we broke above it, we stayed above it. I made a video around here when we first broke above and I said, we need to stay above. And I said that I don't think the Bitcoin dominance has tested this resistance so often just to wick above and then fall ex like immediately back down. We did stay above like I thought we would. I even said in that video, we'll probably have a bounce and then a, a stronger move up. And that's exactly what we had. Um, and I think we will continue to see this. Maybe we'll come down here one more time. Like we saw this previous cycle, we saw us come down close to this, you know, sort of support line now. And then we sort of rallied up. Bitcoin got most of its dominance back. And then leading into the bull run, uh, the dominance crashed. Again, like we often see this, we always see this. Uh, as the bull run gets closer and closer, the dominance will rise. And then as the bull run kicks off, uh, the dominance collapses because all of that value goes into uh, altcoins. Um, but that's when we have, you know, the most sort of liquidity in the ecosystem. And that's when you will notice total mar market cap is higher. But again, I don't want to spend too long on the dominance. Go check out the dominance video. It's Ethereum and Bitcoin if you're interested in this. That about wraps it up for this video, guys. If you liked it, please leave a like, subscribe, comment down below. Am I right or wrong? Is this the first video like this that you've ever seen? Um, thanks, guys. Take care and peace.